morning and good afternoon. You are following the UAMS Centers on Aging and Caregiver Training page. My name is Cassandra Gilbo and I'm the director of the Texas County Regional Center on Aging. Thank you so much for joining me today. We're going to talk about nutrition. And we're talking about nutrition because we're shopping more, we're cooking more, we're doing curbside pickup, we're doing takeout. So it's really important for us to talk about what we're putting in our bodies and how it could potentially affect us. We're going to specifically talk about sodium today and we're going to take these common food items here and compare the amount of sodium in each. I'm going to test your sodium smarts. So the average American consumes about 3,400 milligrams of sodium per day. Um, it's recommended by the American Heart Association that you get no more than 2,300 milligrams of sodium per day. They're even moving towards us getting anywhere between 1,800 and 1,500 milligrams of sodium per day. Now, if you're someone who has diabetes or heart disease, such as congestive heart failure, if you have kidney disease or kidney failure, and even high blood pressure, they want you to get 1,500 milligrams of sodium or less in your diet. We usually call that a sodium restriction. Now, it only takes about 580 milligrams, yes, 580 milligrams of sodium to make the body function properly. So if you think about that 580 milligrams just for the body to function, and then the 3,400 that we consume in our diets, or the recommendation of 2,300 milligrams, we get quite a bit of sodium in our diet each day. So we're going to compare these common food items and see which one has more sodium. So let's jump right in. On this first round, we are going to compare this cinnamon raisin bread, one slice, and we're going to compare it to sourdough bread, one small slice. So, one slice of the raisin cinnamon bread has 140 milligrams of sodium versus one small slice of the sourdough bread has 208 milligrams of sodium. So as you can see in this round of comparison, the sourdough bread has more sodium with 208 milligrams. So that's something you wanna definitely keep in mind the next time you have a meal and you include sourdough bread. All right, on our next round of comparisons. This one is gonna be fairly easy. I think you should all guess um, how much sodium in these particular items. We've got American cheese one slice or Swiss cheese one slice. Which one has more sodium? So with the American cheese, we've got 200 and 20 milligrams of sodium for one slice. And then for one slice of Swiss cheese, we've got 73 milligrams of sodium. So in this round of comparisons, you are right. I'm sure you guess that one slice of American cheese has more sodium at 220. Ooh, that took me one slice. All right, next comparison is going to be a half a cup of mashed potatoes or a half a cup of potato salad. Now, for this comparison, I have included a measuring cup. This is half a cup for each one. Which one has more sodium? So for this round, a half a cup of mashed potatoes has 220 milligrams of sodium versus a half a cup of potato salad has 880 milligrams of sodium. I 
just went silent for a minute so that could sink in. A half a cup of potato salad, a half a cup, has 880 milligrams of sodium. So you know when you go to a barbecue, you get your baked beans, you get you some potato salad, then you've got your uh, pork ribs, beef ribs, chicken, whatever you like. Think about it. Do you get half a cup of potato salad on your plate? Mm -mm. So that's a lot of sodium that you're consuming at just that one setting with your potato salad, not including everything else that you have at your meal. So you can see how it's easy to rack up on that sodium throughout the day. All right, moving on to our next comparison. We've got Raisin Bran cereal, and we have an English muffin, and it's cinnamon with raisins. <laughs> All right, so this comparison, we are going to do one cup of Raisin Bran. Does it have more sodium? Or one English Raisin cinnamon muffin? Which one has more sodium? All right. So the Raisin Bran has 280 milligrams of sodium for one cup. And the Raisin Cinnamon Muffin has 180 milligrams of sodium for one muffin. So in this comparison, yep, you never would have thought that Raisin Bran had so much sodium but it has 280 milligrams of sodium for just one cup. So think about in the morning when you have cereal, do you just eat one cup of cereal? Mm -mm. <laughs> also, I wanted to point out with Raisin Bran that for one cup, you get 47 grams of carbohydrates. And if anybody is a diabetic and you're counting carbs, you know that's kind of high. But also, Raisin Bran has fiber, and we know that we can take that dietary fiber, which it has 7 grams, and subtract it from those total carbohydrates to bring that uh, carb count down. So that's a little trick that you can use when you're eating something. If it has high fiber, you can take that fiber and subtract it from the carbs to bring that carb count down. But it has to be three grams or more fiber in order to do that. So don't forget that. The more fiber, the more you can count it. All right, so in our next round of comparisons, we are gonna compare these chips. We've got plain Lay's potato chips and mini pretzels. Which one do you think has more sodium? The plain chips or the mini pretzels? All right, so for this comparison, the plain chips have 170 milligrams of sodium and the mini pretzels have 420 milligrams of sodium. So yes, in this round of comparisons, the pretzels win. And I said win like that's a great thing, but the pretzels, the mini pretzels have 420 milligrams of sodium. So think about your if you have a sandwich, the sodium in the bread, the sodium in your meat, the sodium in your cheese, depending on if you use American, Swiss, Pepper Jack, whatever you like. And then if you have mini pretzels or even a bag of plain chips, once again, it's easy to rack up on that sodium count. So think about that the next time you sit down for your meal. All right, so our next round of comparisons, we are going to compare fat-free ranch dressing or Italian dressing. Which one has more sodium? The Italian dressing or the fat-free 
ranch dressing. Now for this comparison, we're talking about two tablespoons, two tablespoons of dressing. And if you didn't have a measuring cup when you're at the restaurants, um, one thumb is one tablespoon. So of course, two thumbs would be two tablespoons. That's how much dressing that you're getting, two tablespoons. So Italian or ranch, which one has more sodium? All right, so in this comparison, two tablespoons of Italian dressing has 300 milligrams of sodium, and the fat-free ranch dressing has 280 milligrams of sodium. So there's not a huge difference in the sodium content, but in this round, the Italian dressing is for the win. <laughs> the Italian dressing has 300 milligrams of sodium. So think about when you have a salad and you put your dressing on your salad. Do you typically eat two tablespoons of dressing on your salad? Some people do, some people don't. So maybe instead of having two tablespoons, you just have one tablespoon to help cut down on some of that sodium content. Easy peasy, right? We don't have to take away the things that we love, but we do have to practice portion control, especially when it comes to our carbs and fat and sodium content. All right, so our next round of comparisons. We have turkey breast thinly sliced, and we have ham thinly sliced. So in this round, we get two slices, and you're probably gonna get this one incorrect too. Does ham have more sodium, or does turkey have more sodium? Which one? All right, so in this comparison, the ham has 515 milligrams of sodium, and the turkey has 490 milligrams of sodium. So again, they're both pretty high for just two slices, but of course, the ham is going to take the lead in this round at 515 milligrams of sodium for two slices. So again, you gotta think about your bread, your cheese, um, anything else that you're having with your sandwich how that sodium content can just really rack up in that one meal. All right, our next comparison, we have chicken noodle soup, one can, or tomato soup, one can. Which one again do you think has more sodium? So the tomato soup has 1,000, 510 milligrams of sodium. Actually, that's 1,540 milligrams of sodium, I'm sorry, for the tomato, and 1,510 milligrams for the chicken noodle soup. So there is a 30 milligram difference in chicken noodle and tomato soup. So for this round, the tomato soup takes it at 1,540 milligrams of sodium for one can. Now, if you were to just eat a cup of soup, and I'm gonna look on the back, a cup of soup for the tomato would be 690 milligrams. Still quite a bit. If we were to do just a cup, as you can see, that's a cup. If we were to do just a cup for the chicken noodle soup instead of the whole can, and I'm gonna take a look at the back, we would get 680 milligrams. So again, just a 10 milligram difference between the tomato and the chicken noodle. But since we're comparing, Again, 
the tomato soup for a pan and even for half uh, for a cup is still significantly more sodium than chicken noodle soup. And also remember, different brands are gonna have a various amount of sodium. So just because what you see up here in our comparison will be different from another brand that you find in the store. So that's why it's so important to keep in your toolbox reading nutrition food labels to see the difference between those different brands and how much sodium, carbohydrates, or fats that you're getting. All right, and in our last comparison, put this over here, we've got teriyaki sauce, okay? And we've got soy sauce. So, which one has more sodium? And I think on this one, you guys are gonna pretty much already know which one has more sodium. Um, measuring wise, we are talking about one tablespoon as our serving, for our serving size. So one tablespoon of soy sauce has 900 milligrams of sodium, and then one tablespoon of teriyaki sauce has 600 milligrams of sodium. Still relatively high for both, but of course, soy sauce took this one with 900 milligrams of sodium for one tablespoon. Now think about when you eat fried rice and you like to put soy sauce on there, do you typically just put one tablespoon on there or are you really just laying it on their fit. So think about that the next time you pick up the bottle and you just kind of put it all around the rice um, that you're getting more than 900 milligrams of sodium. So again, you definitely, definitely want to practice portion control when it comes to the sodium content of any of these food items. And remember, that you can calculate your sodium easily by just reading the food label on the back and seeing the serving size and seeing the amount of sodium you get for that serving size. Now, if you have more than the recommended serving size, remember you're gonna have to double that amount. So, if there's 900 milligrams of sodium in one tablespoon, if I decide, hey, I wanna have two tablespoons, guess what? We have now 1,800 milligrams of sodium in just the soy sauce that we're using, not including what we're getting from the food that we're using the soy sauce for. So again, please do not think I am the food police. I am simply just here to make you be more mindful of what you're putting in your body. I do not wanna take away the foods that you love, but you definitely wanna practice portion control when it comes to curtailing that sodium content or curtailing, curtailing uh, cutting it off, those uh, extra carbs and extra fat. So again, thank you so much for tuning in today for this nutrition segment. Uh, remember that there are other options available to help reduce your sodium content. Um, remember that most of your processed foods are going to have high sodium content. Um, don't be afraid to get canned goods. They're still wonderful, especially canned uh, vegetables. Um, a trick that you can do is you can pour out the juice that the canned vegetable is in, um, and then you can rinse off the vegetable to help get some of that extra sodium off. And then you can put those vegetables in water, and you can use herbs and spices to help make it more flavorful and tasty. I've actually got a quick story I wanna tell you about that. Um, my husband, he was 
going to cook us some chili beans. And so um, if you've been to the store, you know, things are very sparse and limited. And so he was used to using dry beans in his recipe. And I said, hey, there's some uh, beans in a can. And he kind of turned his nose up a little bit. <laughs> and so I said, trust me, uh, you won't be able to tell the difference. Give it a try. And so we did. Uh, we went home, we poured the beans in a blender, uh, got all that juice that it was in off, rinsed it off, added it to our recipe. He added some really flavorful herbs and spices. It smelled so delicious and it tasted even more delicious. And he's like, wow, he said, I would have never thought. So we still have ways to be healthy even when our first choice or option is not available. You know, there's always uh, frozen options that are available, but remember, they have been preserved as well, so there's gonna be some sodium um, in those items as well. Fresh is always good, but remember to choose things that are in season because they're gonna be um, more cost-effective than things than fruits and vegetables that are out of season. And also, you have uh, no sodium available, but don't let no sodium uh, fool you. There will be small amounts of sodium in that food item, but it's usually five milligrams or less. Then you have very low sodium options. And again, there's sodium in that food item, but it's usually 140 milligrams or less. And then you have a low sodium options. And again, there is sodium in it, but it's usually gonna be 35 milligrams or less. So you just wanna take that into account whenever you go grocery shopping, think about how much sodium, carbohydrates and fats you're consuming read those food labels, and just be conscious of what you're doing. And again, we're at home a lot more, we get bored, so break off that friendship with the refrigerator and the pantry and go take a walk. Um, again, thank you so much for watching this live today. Um, I did wanna throw out there that um, as a community, do not forget the older adults in your neighborhood. A lot of them may have experienced food insecurity before the pandemic. And if you think about it now with things being a little bit more scarce than before, it's going to be harder for them to get access uh, to the things that they need. Maybe it's a physical limitation. Maybe it's transportation that keeps them from getting the items that they need. So think about those older adults in your community and your neighborhoods. Uh, that could really benefit from your help when you're taking a grocery run. Uh, keep them in mind. And of course, let's all come together, be mindful of each other, stay safe, and stay guarded. Well, thank you so much for tuning in again. This is the UAMS Centers on Aging and Caregiver Training page. I really appreciate you tuning in. Don't forget to like, share, and comment and I will see you the next time. Bye-bye.